The series Impossible Lands began through a series of backpacking trips that I've been taking over the past uh, several years since moving to Vancouver, BC. And those backpacking trips have taken me all across the, the Western uh, United States and Canada. And one of the things that I always noticed on these trips is how the landscape would change from year to year uh, due to climate change. So whether it be um, you know, fiery, fiery skies, uh, decimated forests, or even um, dried up lakes, this was something that I, I realized was kind of um, shifting and changing and that I was documenting. And recently, I acquired uh, or I was gifted a large archive of images that my father had shot when he was studying um, geology. So these slides are almost 50 years old. And um, I realized that a lot of the images that he had taken and that I had taken uh, were actually done uh, in similar or, or in the same locations. In my practice, I've always been really interested in um, the, the ways in which we perceive the world around us and how that changes the way that we um, behave and act and inhabit the world. And so it seemed uh, particularly fitting at this point in time to think about uh, what might become of those landscapes and to try and kind of imagine that. And of course, that's out of our hands. There's no way for us to really know what things will, um, how things will take shape and how things will uh, transform over time. So I wanted to use the element of chance. I had three slide projectors that I set up in my studio and arranged for them to um, play, to go through their carousels of images in such a way that I could mix these archival images and the new or current images and have them all layer one on top of another on my studio wall. And then I shot those as these, um, I guess, imaginary or possible landscapes. and. I think what's interesting with them or with the outcome is that although they, they do have a little bit of a surreal or dreamy feel to them, they're not necessarily unbelievable. They're not that far off from what could become uh, one day. For the show that became an online show, uh, All the Light You Cannot See at Monica Reyes Gallery and part of Capture Photography Festival. Part of the series is presented as uh, large prints and then I also made them in the way that they were um, also intended to be shown uh, sculpturally or as um, installations and so they're on um, silk, silk prints uh, that would be kind of layered in space so that people could experience them maybe in a similar way to how we would look at slides and again creating an additional layering and an additional um, kind of interaction there for the viewer. Impossible Lands is also currently on view for spring 2020 at the Evergreen Art Gallery in uh, Coquitlam, BC, where they have become uh, large uh, vitrine light boxes. Um, which was kind of envisioned and curated by uh, the curator Catherine Denny. In a sense, I'm, I'm kind of scrying for or, or trying to understand what the future could look like. But at the end of the day, we really have no control over what happens. It's totally up to chance. Um, the only thing that we can possibly do is set certain parameters and just really hope that things turn out for the best.